So there's this giant deer at the E3, and the last couple of years, Roach has been calling us off of him. His name is Junior. So Roach's management style at the E3 is, uh, at times, questionable. I think sometimes he has deer there that are absolutely old enough to go after, and he just, I think, wants to put them on the do not shoot list until everybody gets out of town, I think is how, how he operates. So last year, you know, I, everybody's got different opinion on it. I, we, we assumed he was a four or five year old deer. Was he four, was he five, who knows. Um, if he, you know, just looking at his body and, and trying to figure out, you know, could he get bigger? Um, we, we thought he could. I told Langy, I said, if he comes out, take a look at him. Langy was hunting in the area where, where Junior had been, and, and uh, sure enough, Junior comes out for uh, 15 or 20 minutes, you know, in front of Langy, and uh, he took a good look and, and couldn't force himself to shoot him. If I'd have been the stand with Langy, I would have slapped him in the back of the head and grabbed his bow and shot left-handed. He's a lefty. This year, we uh, start running cameras about July or August, and it didn't take long, and Junior showed up, and there was no doubt that, that we made the right call the year before, uh, letting him go, because he, you know, again, just exploded. Well, miraculously, Junior survives, and Rochi being the uh, upstanding individual that he is, allows Ryan to chase Junior. So I told Langy, I will try to resist the urge to go, you know, hunt this deer, uh, but you better get up here early uh, get to get first crack at him. Finally, I'm able to get an opportunity to get up there. Conditions are great. The weather's good. We're gonna have good winds to hunt the spots we want. I'm really feeling confident about this. Would y'all hush up? You ever seen what a kill zone will do to a 1,200 pound heifer? Yeah, I didn't think so. Here. Hmm. Mike and I have tried to pull out all the stops this evening. Roji's gonna be getting back in tonight. We're gonna get it done tonight. At all costs. We got in here really early. We were probably, probably set up about 3.45. We got a good Two and a half hours till the sun goes down. We'll see if we can't make some magic. We weren't sure if it was going to be prime for deer movement because of how windy it was, but deer start pouring out. Junior's one of the first deer in the field. Oh, baby.
this buck showed us how dominant he had become from the little gangly two-year-old that we saw four or five years ago to now we are hoping that he is going to end up coming into bow range but he is running everything with antlers out of the field he doesn't want any bucks getting near his does we are hoping that this buck is going to end up coming into bow range but he is running everything with antlers out of the field he doesn't want any bucks getting near his does Finally, he's starting to get into range, and no matter how many times you imagine how everything's gonna go down in your head, it ends up usually not working out that way. I drew back actually twice, I think, and on the second time, you know, just end up kind of rushing the shot a little bit, just, you know, and that's, you know, nobody to blame there but myself, but just worried a little bit more about just, you know, getting the shot off than making sure everything was right. And so those guys backed out. We, uh, we met up, watched the footage, I don't know how many times, you know, trying to give our best guess on what happened, and just decided we'd go back in the next morning. And went in there and just, we just fanned out and started looking in bedding areas, um, trying to find blood, cross creek crossings, um, you know, anywhere where he could have possibly went. And I remember jumping over this fence and I, and I get into this pretty, pretty thick area and Sure enough, Junior jumps up, not 30 yards in front of me, and is running straight away, and just really didn't didn't have much of a limp. Um, you know, he was moving pretty good. Check. 
One, two. We got it, Brian? Why are you filming? From that crap all. Oh, well, we always do film. Oh. So we, do, we do a TV show, we hunt. Mm -hmm. I forgot. We got a little something that we want to show you guys. I, th I think I think one in particular might be pretty interested in it. Um, so we'll just cut to the chase. Let's go ahead and open it up. Now, it may take a moment. Is that Junior? It sure is. <laughs> there ain't no thinking about it. He's alive and well. We have studied multiple pictures to make sure that the uh, the kickers and everything and dude, he's there. He's there. no doubt. Well, so he's the bad. crazy thing is, it's one pick and look at the date. 11:22. It was a great sense of relief when I saw that they had gotten a trail cam picture of Junior, um, just knowing that he was still around. So, feel better? Heck yeah. It kind of makes our decision on where to go in the morning. A little bit. A little bit easier. Yeah, I'll go there. <laughs> well, the E3 hunt has traditionally turned into an evening hunt this late in the year. But when you've got a special deer and you've got the right wind, to go to a special spot, we make exceptions. There's not really a whole lot left to say about this deer other than he is special. We've already gotten a chance at him this year and didn't capitalize and just hoping we might be blessed and have the opportunity one more time. And deer like Junior, a lot of people might get lucky to have an encounter with a deer like that once in their lifetime. And we've already gotten that this year, so I'm not expecting anything, just praying and hoping for a blessing and a chance to rectify our, our wrongs. It is just cracking daylight, and Mikey spots the movement, and I turn around and I can tell this is definitely Junior behind us. I don't know if it's this buck or what, but he is telling me, get a shot off, hurry, he's gonna, he's gonna bolt, shoot him, shoot him, shoot him. <laughs> but congratulations, my brother. You just got Junior. <laughs> what in the world? What's he locked on? I was like, he's not moving, like, with all movement, like, no, no head turning or anything. <laughs> and I'm sitting there, like, trying to get right up on the tree. Because I'm like, you're like, that's the angle. I'm like, dude, I don't know. I was like, I'll try it. <laughs> I said, you gotta do whatever you can to get him to shoot. I said, it's gonna be tough. I'll just get excited. <laughs> you, got, you got me to shoot. I freaking just buried one in the tree. <laughs> We got some fletchings in a tree. Mikey talked me into the shot. Oh, look at the hell. Oh. <laughs> yes. Hey. <laughs> right. Oh my 
clouds, dude. We, we've like got, we've got like barely light. Mike, Mikey's like, we've like, we've got, we've, we've got like no, no camera light. We've got, we've got like no camera light. Mikey's like, it's him, it's him. He, he's like, he's, he's like, take the shot. He's like, he's like, just take the shot. And like, and like, and I'm like, and so I'm like, I'm like, dude, I'm gonna have to literally go right up against the tree. I should have known something was up because like he's like wanting me to take the shot. And I'm like, we're good. Like, like there's no light. <laughs> like, <laughs> and he's like, and I was like, all right. How long ago was this? Oh, we couldn't this, get, yeah, we couldn't get the, minutes, maybe. Yeah, we couldn't get the call to go We were like, the surely, surely he's yeah. done it by now. But. Dude, we're sitting there in the truck. We're parked right up here. And like, oh, we don't want to go in and ruin it. Hold on. Let's get a good angle on that and see if that would have killed him. Look, I mean, it was, <laughs> it, it was center, it was center mass. Do not ever take that arrow out. I'm gonna have a plaque. I'm gonna have a plaque made and put right here and tell the whole story. <laughs>
Goodbye. Go ahead and circle flush that turd.